Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Horse Racing Show. I'm Kenny Rice. Happy New Year as we go with Episode 50. And what a way to ring in the New Year with two great friends of mine. Mm. Very knowledgeable people they are. Evan Hammonds, the managing editor of The Blood Horse, and Lenny Schulman, who is now retiring, at least uh, on a full-time basis. But they are here to help us wrap up the year, tell you everything that horse racing needs to do. Solve all your problems. Stand by. You can call them at 1-900. No, no, actually not. Welcome in, guys. <laughs> yes, we, we solve anybody's problem, personal, horse racing, whatever it is. Bring it on. You will not take that stand, Evan? I'm not taking You're much stand, more no. conservative, yeah. aren't you? I have to go to work tomorrow. Oh, you, you're the one that works. I knew, <laughs> I knew somebody did. Uh, horse racing, it was, it was a year. It was a year. And I think the best is yet to come. Gee, yes. Look at me, Miss Mr. Sunshine. Mr. Optimist. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Lemonade half full. Yeah. Yeah, I th I think it's uh obviously we we've come out of a tough year and uh so everybody gets to re uh, recalculate their uh, bankrolls and attitudes and uh hopefully move forward to uh better times. He mentioned bankroll. Is that renegotiation talk you think Evan to come back full time? It's bluster. It's bluster. It's bluster. But you were talking about uh Good stories, and here's one that uh, just kind of throwing it out there. But as much flack as the Maryland Jockey Club got for the conditions mm -hmm. of the Pimlico race course, and I love Pimlico, but I'm a sure historian. I mean, I, I really enjoy it. But they came out later in the year, and they've come together with the city with a plan sure. to reinvent Pimlico where it is, which hopefully will take away from their plans to move it to Laurel. And I think that's that's another huge bright spot in racing but the ravens are now moving out <laughs> on their super just when they could win a super bowl okay <laughs> no, no. no you're right no, but I, but I think i think that's a huge move for, that is a huge uh, racing and for uh the classics and for racing in maryland more on the year that is passed and looking ahead here on the horse racing show with lenny and evan and me kenny right after this Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. I'm Kenny Rice. Thank you for tuning in again this week as we go into the year 2020, episode number 50, if you're keeping score. These two gentlemen are because they're ahead of everything in the game of horse racing and longtime friends of mine, Evan Hammond's <coughs> making a return visit Hello. just weeks ago. Ooh. He was on managing editor of The Blood Horse and Lenny Schulman, novelist and writer extraordinaire from The Blood Horse, who is now retiring. As of today, I, I am a free man. <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> Wait a minute. Not so fast. We've got negotiations going on already? For I, I was going to come, come as, as baby New Year with a sash, but I thought it was too revealing. I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> well, we're trying to build up an audience. Feel free. <laughs> Actually, old man would be, would be more of my speed yeah. at this point. <laughs> well, Happy New Year, guys. Happy, happy New Year to you. Happy good 2020. Good. Yeah. You know, good decade. It's got to be better than 2019. Got to be. You know, so we figured that's why I wanted you two guys on for perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you can only talk about it. This is so bad. We, you know, we talked Santa Anita. We probably talked about Santa Anita and the situation there in the 49 previous shows, shows. at least 38, 39. Yeah, that's probably a fair number. Everything yeah. goes back to Santa Anita no matter what happens. So. Uh, the new coalition that starts, and uh, hopefully everybody's obviously excited. It's like the start of spring training. You know, everybody, nobody has a loss yet going into 2020. Um, is, is this all going to be a good thing? I would, I would think so. I mean, it, it, again, it's it's bringing awareness. It's bringing people together. Uh, I think like uh, last week at the symposium, there just seems to be more. Uh, uh, not a sense of urgency, but there's more involvement. I mean, everybody's getting re-energized, re-involved in trying to, you know, do the right thing. Yeah, you're a big film buff, Kenny, and, yes. and you know the the first the cardinal rule of writing for film is you know characters don't react until they're backed up against the wall and they're forced to make a decision. Any movie in the world, that's what happens. And, you know, that's where horse racing finds itself. It's the same thing as, you know, when they made sushi out of Ferdinand 20 years mm -hmm. ago. And, and that was literally the, the beginning of, of the aftercare movement, which has now become 
an integral part of, of the <clears throat> thoroughbred industry. Right. And thank yeah. goodness, because it's been a great thing. And I think Santa Anita, uh, again, just, just like that, uh, you know, has made people aware and scared and up against the wall. And, hey, we really need to to act and do something <clears throat> and get our acts together in a cohesive manner where we're not forming a circle and shooting for a change. And I, and I think it's, well, it's, it's kind of where we are. So yeah, if you can see the, the, the silver lining, uh, you know, that was the cloud and the silver lining going forward is I, I think we are yeah. starting to see people working together now. It's like they shoot horses, don't they? Uh, the, the movie, by the way, <laughs> yes. you know, where they just try to hold on to get through this marathon. <laughs> Gig there. Young. Gig Young at his finest. Yes. That was a tremendous performance. <laughs> yeah. But I think we've reached that moment. And, you know, at this time last year, I think San Anita, uh, the management group, really was doing everything wrong, you know. And, and, you know, they're pressuring people to run. They're carding cheap races. They're running in any kind of weather and any kind of track condition. They fire you know, Rick Hammerly, who's the vice president that's been there forever. <clears throat> the atmosphere is so toxic that the, the track superintendent leaves. Yeah, they couldn't have, they couldn't have been doing it any more wrong if they tried. And, you know, they have now had the deathbed conversion and now they're in the lead of all of these safety measures that we're seeing now. And so it's been an incredible turnaround yeah. in one year's time. That's incredible too. I mean, now the uh, you know the weather horses used to run all the time in right. in, in bad weather. Now they're or in heat and taking a look at it. like the you know Haskell this summer when they they canceled racing at Saratoga for a couple of days and right. they delayed the the Haskell. I mean they're they're I mean they're just being more yeah. sensible about it. And and they realize the optic of it all. I mean, yeah. what it, yeah. it dropped like four degrees in the Haskell when they moved it to the. You know, I mean, Seven maybe, you know, but, but I understand because it was an well, they, NBC they can show. The rest, they can the rest of the card. Right, and, yeah. right. Now, they did it, and it was an NBC show, and there was concern, <laughs> obviously, on national TV, given that everybody always had to report on everything naturally. Uh, but I, I do think it, that, I think that is the positive. If a, if yeah. a negative can be turned into a positive, I don't know how more negative it could get <laughs> than what they just went through in horse racing. We're talking with Lenny Shulman, Evan Hammonds of the Blood Horse, wrapping up this year, moving into a new year. May, may I just say something? It's, I know this you, is show number 50. Please. I'd like to congratulate you on, on a wonderful year that you've had with this show. Well, thank uh, you. On a weekly basis, you have great guests. Uh, you are on outlets all over the place now, and, and it's just the esteem that people hold <laughs> you in. And congratulations on a great first year and hopefully a yeah. start of the second great year. Well, growing, thank you. Growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah. That was unsolicited. No, you can now hear, if you have a Dixie cup at home, you put it to your ear and, and you can listen to the show. It's fantastic. Scott Hall, director in there. Do we have any more Dixie cups available for those that are listening and like to call in? And we've, we've got a few. Thomas is on it right now. we got Thomas, Kenny, and Ben Chaffins. They're making they're making with the horse show logo well, on them. You can do that. Arts and crafts class, yes. You know, that's the biggest thing now. And, and you know, we talked about that a little bit in the business Used to everything's online right now. Everything's automatic right now. You know, you cover a horse race right now. You don't have to wait to read about it in the paper the next day or the next week in the blood horse. How, how does that change things the way you cover well, it? Well, you well, we talked about it uh, a couple of weeks ago. You, you, yeah. We have almost like you're writing three stories. You're writing a story that's just a you know AP style type basic mm -hmm. write up, but then you come back later and flesh that out a little more. But then for the magazine, it doesn't go out until. Tuesday that people aren't going to get until the next week. That needs to be a backstory feature story. So you're you're you have to you have to write the story three three times. That's not, no wonder you're retiring, Lenny. Huh? No, well, that, well, say, well, <laughs> that's usually oh, not the sorry same. Sorry to break it to you, Evan. <laughs> well, Evan brings up a great point because it, it, you know it's two very different kinds of writing. There's the you know, the Jack Webb, just the facts, ma'am, who, what, when, where, why, which is <clears throat> yeah. newspaper reporting. And that now is not an overnight newspaper thing. It's online, you know, 10 minutes later. But, you know, I think I've always taken pride in, in, in the in the longer aspect of it and the right, you know, what's in the magazine should be real writing. You know, it should mm -hmm. go beyond the facts to 
you know, a stylized story where you pick out a, a right. and we've talked about this behind every horse, there's a story behind every owner, there's a story on every breeding, there's a, so you have to you have to actually get in there and, and take the guts of that story mm. and put it in a you know, a writing style, literary style, so that it it lives on. It doesn't have to be five minutes later, but it does have to live on because, you know, the blood horse is a, I think we all, we may not feel the pressure of it, but but it's a historical document the same way, you know, the New York <clears throat> Times is, uh, well, sometimes not in their horse racing coverage, thought of <laughs> a, a, as a historical document. And, you know, the blood horse, you know, people will- People keep those. Yeah, 30 years from now, people, look in and say, hey, who was that horse who won that race, you know, in 1972? And it's in there. It's and true. It's, it's important. True. There's a page story on, on the breeder. and Yeah. And, and that, you know, that's in, important, I think, uh, for everyone, because as we talked about, you know, horse racing doesn't have like that NFL films. Or if they do, we don't know where that, li you know, I don't know where do you watch old, not just old races, but, you know, interviews with, with Charlie Whittingham, like that brilliant article that you had <clears throat> recently in the <throat> Blood Horse, by the way, and all the pictures Evan pulled up and everything. You don't have that where you can say, you know, and here they were talking to Charlie in 1971. You, you don't have those. <laughs> if they do, bring them out, yeah. horse racing, whoever's listening that might know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there are a few troves of... Guys, I know there was that one guy in New York who had all those videos. At, yeah, at, there's some. Point yeah. At Belmont Park. But, you know, and, and I, I'll put in a plug. I wrote an editorial a couple of weeks ago, the Keeneland the Library. The Keeneland Library, Library exactly. is very good. Great, yes. great, great job of, of holding on to archives. Uh, maybe not videos per se. Maybe they do now. But photos and articles, they do a phenomenal job. And some of the collections like the daily racing forms going back to year one i think they've taken that collection and you know i know they have the thoroughbred record and the blood horses over there so anybody looking to research anything the keeneland library is a really good place i've used i've used the racing forums from back in the 40s yeah yeah fantastic stuff we're talking with two fantastic guys. Notice how I did that segue. <laughs> what, what a See, professional that, you that's, are. That's, that's how we do it in TV. <laughs> Lenny Shulman, Evan Hammonds, good friends of mine from the Racing Forum. No, they're from the Blood Horse. He is from the Racing Forum. Well, you are from the Racing Forum way yeah, back when. Way back when. Okay, we'll talk more, though, about the year and look ahead to the new year in racing and, you know, and get into movies and, and you know, music and important stuff right after this on the Horse Racing Show. Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. I'm Kenny Rice. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We've been downloaded in 22 countries now. Amazing. Is that is that true? Well, you know, they download. So that doesn't mean that, you know, everybody in the country is listening to it. But as we know in TV and in radio and in newspapers sometimes, right, they'll say our circulation. That doesn't mean you're reading everything. So, yeah, they'll put it out there. Well, my, yeah, my daughter was in uh, Shanghai for four months, and so I sent her a link to the show. So you're, you're big Thank in you. Shanghai. Thank you're you. big in Shanghai. We've been shanghai a few times, haven't we, Lenny? <laughs> oh, but that's that a different That might be 23. <laughs> that's, Lenny Shulman and Evan Hammonds, our guests today, we're wrapping up the year. I want to get back to one thing you said earlier, a little bit about the New York Times uh, I think had Santa Anita not had the problems with all the horse deaths they had the first year, that the story that had about, uh, what, 24-hour, 36-hour play on Justify, and did he take, <clears throat> did, he, did he get a boost, to, and was it hidden in the Triple Crown, and all that would have been a story about nothing, which it was. It probably would not have seen the light of day, I don't think. It's, is that fair to say? I, I would say it probably would have seen the light of day, just based on times and how they've handled things that may be their editors it's not necessarily yeah. the author but yeah uh, i mean he i mean, i'm sure the story was pitched and i mean what he yeah, said well, some well, of it was well, factual listen, but listen i i had an interesting deal with that because uh in september of 2018 i happened to talk to somebody from california and, and told them that i was about to sign a contract to write the book about justify mm -hmm. And uh, he looked at me and said, don't do it. I said, what do you mean, don't do it? He goes, I can't tell you why, but don't do it. And I said, well, I'm going to do it unless you <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me, me why, why, because I like you, but you know, I'm not going to not do this project. And so, it, yes, Evan's absolutely right. It is news. And this 
person knew that that positive had been called against Justify after the Santa Anita Dairy, which none of us knew. Not, nobody, I mean, Bafford knew it. Some people knew it, but we didn't know it. It was, certainly wasn't public. And uh, so, yeah, that, it's news, yeah. though, and somebody was going to bring it out. It's a story. It, it yeah, is a story. Was... Having said that, and this is what I really hate about certain people who write, uh, it, was, it was distorted. Uh, the author of the New York Times story found one guy, one guy, one veterinarian out of, out of you know ten thousand, who who said that scopolamine is a performance enhancing drug, which nobody else nobody says, on nobody, the nobody planet else said. believes, yeah. nobody else thinks. Yeah. But because the author of the story quoted this one guy. You know, it, it, it taints the story, and, and there were more inaccuracies. I don't want to get into all of it. There, there, there was five inaccuracies in that story well, I like guess that, or yeah. misconceptions, yeah. or trying to steer the person into a, a, a certain story that really wasn't the true story. That's kind of where I was getting at it. It may have had a little play. It would have been, what, four columns, four paragraphs? You know, he, he tested positive for this. Yes, it's Other not a drug did. that anybody administers it's, as a performance. And, but, but those words would, were no, never... But it, it comes yes. out like there's a major conspiracy <laughs> yeah. going on to help get a triple crown one. And that's yeah. that was just the issue I had because I was on some talk shows and that's what people would call me up. Other sports guys would have me on their shows and... That's what they want to know. How much? How much muscle did he did he put on with that? And how yeah, fast did he yeah. go with that? And normally they'd never talk about horse racing, other than oh, when it's yeah. negative or before the Kentucky Derby. That seems to be the two times people want to talk to me before the Kentucky Derby or a negative horse racing yeah, story. Yeah, and, and you know the nugget that was in there that made made it seem like something is that the California Horse Racing Board did make their decisions. Well, that was to, to us. That was the issue. Yeah, that's it, and that's the issue a lot with horse racing. Yeah. To me, is the transparency. Just, just you know, like when the Breeders' Cup had the vote to keep it at Santa Anita. Yeah, you had the doors locked and shut, <laughs> and, you know, banging on the door. <laughs> hey, why don't you just come out and say, hey, we're standing by our track. This is one of the showcase tracks. We have faith in them. They've made a lot of changes. They're doing some good. They're at the forefront of things. Here we are. That's it. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, but they don't. They can't. Well, yeah, they can't. They just can't. They just can't. That. It's it's still <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> <can't do> <laughs> to, to have the courage of your commitment. And, and yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because because I wholeheartedly <laughs> agreed with the decision I did too. behind uh -huh. closed doors or not. Right. Um, and we were all out there for Breeders' Cup. It was a fantastic week. Uh, you know, okay, they went a little too far making the trek deep, and I understand that and everything. Right. And then the, 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 the thirty vet team, they were ev they were everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Yes, everybody was super paranoid <clears throat> about safety, which is how it should be. And you know, we got within a hundred yards of a perfect yeah. Breeders' Cup. But what I object to, or why I'm bringing it up, is we got letters the week after. I knew they shouldn't have had it at Santa Anita. This was so predictable that something yeah. was going to happen. I knew that, well, you didn't know anything. You're an idiot. Uh, you know, you came within 100 yards of a perfect breeders' cup. And who can guarantee that there aren't going to be breakdowns anywhere? I mean, Keeneland had more breakdowns in its autumn meet this year than it's ever had before. You know, I, this after putting in safety measures, uh, yeah, additional. You do the right and it was, they did everything it was right. Dirt. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah they did everything yeah. right. They did everything to prepare to avoid. And that's all. That's all the sport can do is just continue to do everything right, but be open about it. Is it it's, a good? This is what we are doing. It, so you think if they called you guys today, and they never will, but if they did. <laughs> They're never, they won't call you're the call only one who calls. Gonna call you, yeah. If they say, Evan Hammonds and Lenny yeah. Shulman, we want you to be on the coalition. Give me one or two ideas that you think they, we have to implement right now to start off 2020 mm -hmm. for the image of horse racing as well as the safety of horse racing. I'll just be honest. I mean, ju just realize that, you know, the accidents are going to happen. Unfortunately, they're a fact of life. But get out there, be transparent, be honest in explaining it. Uh, you know, do everything you can to to have your track in in, in the best conditions. Uh, you know, I, I think these rules that are being put in place are are great now. <clears throat> you know, it, it's a fact that horses coming off long layoffs or horses that have had problems in the past are are more susceptible to having 
injuries. So let's take a harder look at them. You know, the, the new uh, scanning machines that they're putting, it, it, it's a great idea. It's <clears throat> been proven that these injuries take, you know, they, they, they happen over time. So you can see the beginning of it. So let's put those at risk horse, horses to the side and not race them. Let's not be so greedy. You know, let, let's not just go for the buck all the time. Let's truly put the safety of the horse and the jockeys yeah. first. Uh, and, let, and let's be open about it and and turn, you know, the track super into a, he has to have a component that's that's PR. I mean, he has mm -hmm. to be able to go and talk to you on TV or us for the blood horse and not, you know, you have to go beyond your job and, and sell the sport right. as well. And, and that's we're, all, a, we're all trying to sell the sport. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, how many of us know, uh, I, hey, I know how to put a track together. I don't know how to put a track together. I know what they say is in it. I know, you know, they show me the ratio of, of uh, you know, sand to whatever. Uh, but, yeah, you need somebody to explain it. And, and that was the thing with Santa Anita. I thought at the very first of last year, or first of this year, whichever one we're going into 2020, that I would have gone to Hollywood and hired some of these PR firms that are handling mm -hmm. those Hollywood scandals and brought them in because it's not the standard press release. Uh, uh, he's going to be sidelined for <clears throat> six weeks. Yeah. You know, yes. it's, it's not the yes. standard. Bring in a PR person that actually yeah. covers catastrophes, which this yeah. was, and continue to snowball. It's a great point. Crisis management is, uh, is a fact of any industry today. Everybody's still buying Tylenol, even though there was a scandal well, with the yeah. guy taking the top off and putting poison. Wait a minute! In there. I took one before the show. <laughs> yours, oh, yours yeah. isn't good. Okay. You know, I, don't, or, uh, I don't even remember the tire company from ten years ago where the tires were blowing no. up, but they're still yeah. making tires. Whoever that was, People still watching the NFL. Yeah. I drove over I here in a Pinto it. today. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> Why do I care? I'm reckless. But I put, I put my Vega next to your you Pinto. Your <laughs> but yeah, we're getting killed on the messaging, and uh, and I know that new coalition of racetracks that just mm -hmm. came together has hired a, 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 a you know, hot, hot, you know what, a PR firm out right. of Washington, D.C. To, to do that. And it's, again, it's way too late. Uh, you know, you've let the animal rights wackos get, get first run on you. And, uh, you know, now you're playing from behind. But it's a great point. You have to win the, the, the crisis management <laughs> PR duel. You, you made a mention, too, of, of, of not going for the money, and you have to realize, you know, tracks are going to have to close in inclement weather. Yeah. They, you know, you, may, you, you hope it doesn't happen like on a derby day, but, you know, at uh, Laurel Park or anywhere in the, in the northeast in the wintertime when maybe they would have run. Right. It's gotta, you got to call it off. It's always perfect weather for the yeah. derby. You know that. It's always perfect. <laughs> I've never had to buy rain gear yet. Oh, <laughs> actually, it's supplied to me. I really haven't had to buy rain gear. That's true. NBC yeah. gives it to me. Yeah, you yeah. better have right. some. That's right. <laughs> All right. When we come back, you know, there were some good things that happened in 19, and we're going to talk yeah, about yeah. some of those moments, the horses, the uh, individuals, when we come back with Lenny Schulman and Evan Hammonds here on the Horse Racing Show. Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. I'm Kenny Rice, walking tall trotter hey. today with Evan Hammonds, managing editor of the Blood Horse, and the late Lenny Shulman. Yeah. <laughs> the ghost of Lenny yeah. Shulman. Lenny, who is retiring him. after, well, you'll never quit writing, but you're retiring, I guess, from the Blood Horse. Uh, full time. Full I'm full -time. retiring from full time work. Hopefully, my byline will still be in there on a regular basis. Certainly planning for that. And, uh, a couple of other book projects rattling around in my head, which there's plenty of room to rattle. And, and Justify is still available, by the way. One of the best <laughs> horse racing books you'll read. Seriously, it really right. is. I, I it love really that good. book. It was really good. Thank yeah. You. Uh, so this 19, what was your favorite? Last year. Last year. Uh, what was your favorite story of 2019? Well, I, it, this may not be favorite story, but this is something I think has been really interesting, and that is watching – the offspring of American Pharaoh run it too. Yeah. They sold remarkably well as yearlings. They averaged, I don't know, 400 and something thousand dollars last year. Everybody loved them, but you never know until they get on the track. Right. And he, uh, the leading freshman sire, uh, had five winners in Japan, had a Breeders' Cup, had a first and third in a Breeders' Cup race. I mean, his, so to have a horse of that quality 
have his offspring show that on the racetrack, I thought was really interesting. And I'll plug in a little stat here. Uh, I verify this with uh, Ed DeRosa, who does a lot of stuff with Brisnet. Mm -hmm. There was not one American Pharaoh two-year-old that ran in a claiming race. Wow. I mean, every American Pharaoh start, every American Pharaoh two-year-old start was in, was, was in, you know, open company. Amazing. That's, that, a, that's that an is incredible amazing. stat. That that's is an amazing stat. stat. So to me, I thought that was a, a pretty amazing story. I, I want to go back now and look and see what Secretariat's first crop did. Yeah. And affirmed. I know Seattle Sleuths was really good, but I want to stack those up. So we'll look at that. But anyway, I thought that was a, a fascinating story of 2019. Yeah, it, well, you know, one of my favorites was Mark Cassie, who's a great guy, mm-hmm. as we all know, and a terrific trainer, and got that, you know, got his victory, <laughs> and then got his other victory yeah. with a different yeah. horse yeah. that you weren't expecting, but uh, War of Will winning the Preakness, and Sir Winston, the surprise, winning the Belmont. You know, not many guys do yeah. that, win two Triple Crown races in a year, and especially with different horses. Yeah, that's eh, Lucas, Wayne maybe. Lucas, yeah, Wayne yeah, but, you know, yeah. and you got to gotta go, when you got to go back about yeah, 20, 20 years, years. Yeah. I go, that's pretty special. You know, yeah, I think it yeah. was like 96 or something. You had to go back that far with Lucas to the last mm-hmm. time a guy's done that. No, he, yeah, Cassie is a great guy and very, very deserving. Had a hell of a year. Uh, I guess I'd go back to Saratoga uh, for, for various things. I think uh, – that midnight pursue uh, a late race yeah, with, 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 yeah. with yeah was certainly one of the great races of the year uh but two fantastic fillies um and, and also that emotional moment when, when, when Bafford won the uh, the Whitney with uh, McKenzie oh, yeah. uh, right mm-hmm. after Mary Lou Whitney had, had passed which is a huge story of the year also right. and uh, you know the horse being named after a friend of Bob's who had past also and just the emotion all around on that and you know i got to do a question answer with john hendrickson uh, mm-hmm. the, the mary lou's widower uh at saratoga and just the emotion that was coming out of him talking about her uh you know i hate to say it's a favorite story but it was really a you know a moving story and, and she was so and, much part of racing and supportive of racing and she she was the first lady of saratoga so you know i mean she's just a larger than life yeah. uh, you know just an incredible person i don't know that anybody has has accomplished more or done more for <clears throat> for a town and turned it around to I mean, Saratoga is just a phenomenal place today, and yeah. it really wasn't when she started working at it. And right. uh, to have that kind of effect, yes, did she have money? Yes, but she had more than money. She had a charisma and an intelligence and a will to to really do special things, and she did. She was a remarkable yeah. person. And the work she did for the backstretch workers, too, yeah. On, yeah. Top, on top of – Top of the stuff she did for the city. Yeah. Talking with Lenny Showman, Evan Hammonds. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see them right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to them, that's who they, they are. are. Uh, you know, bricks and mortar. Starts off the year winning the turf uh, at, at Pegasus. And, you know, what a year. Just not, not a misstep. That's hard to do. Chad Brown has got to be in the running again for trainer of the year. Uh, I think right. Asmussen moves in there with Matoli. You know, I don't know. Well, it's got to be Cassie and And it's got to be Cassie and Chad. But but Chad set an earnings record again. First time a trainer's gone over over 30 30 million. Yeah, and Sister Charlie, you know, I mean, I'm going to miss somebody. You start start missing Chad, you'll miss a Chad Brown (laughs) name when you go, yeah, 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 that's right. Well, I think one of the interesting Eclipse races uh, is going to be Sister Charlie and and Uni, another another Chad Chad Brown. Brown. But, you know, Uni comes along and wins the – Breeders' Cup beats the boys uh, after a great race at Keeneland. Well, Sister Charlie had done great things earlier in the year. That's a, that's that's a hell of a race yeah. there. Yeah, because they're totally. De- I mean, even though they're turf Philly divisions, they're right. Miler versus yeah, you know, mile and eighth, mile and a quarter start. So yeah. bricks and mortar wrapped <laughs> up his. He's going to be horse of the year probably, right? Yeah. We, yeah. Matoli uh, wraps up his division. Yeah. Midnight Bijou wraps up her division. <laughs> I think the two-year-old uh, ju- the, the juvenile males is a wide-open thing. You have a, a Breeders' Cup winner water. who came out of nowhere, and you know some of the higher-regarded juveniles really did not show right. up well or show up at or all show that up day. Like Maxfield, Unfortunately, you know, Maxfield didn't scratched, yeah. uh, and, and uh, Eight Rings didn't do much, and, and Dale Roman's horse didn't do much. Uh, so that that's, that's, a, that's that could go a lot of different ways. Yeah, that's just how much weight you want to give the Breeders' Cup, and I 
guess the breeders probably, cup. Was, I'm gonna guess it's, it's probably enough. Yeah, because I, no I don't think there was another two year old that won. Two major races. How yeah. about the three-year-old yeah. picture, Evan? I think the three-year-old Colt is going to be. Well, an I think I think one. when uh, when uh, Maximum Security won the uh, cigar, I think that that was the you think that, that was the license. You think that, that wrapped it up there? there. Oh yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I don't know if it I think a, he, had a, he had a. Well, I mean, I think no. I mean, I, he, I totally he, don't. You know, he finished first in the Derby. I think that carries. Yeah. It carries some weight. Yeah. yeah. Even, even if you want to throw the derby completely out, which I don't, I agree with Evan. I, he was the best was, horse in that I, derby. Yeah. Uh, but even if you want to throw that derby out, he still has accomplished more than any other three When the Florida derby, I mean, that Florida oh, yeah. derby I mean, was very impressive. He I was, won just, the Haskell, I was he throwing won. Code of Honor yeah. out would probably be the runner-up, would you think? Yeah. Well, Code of Honor, well, probably. Omaha Beach to, oh. could come back and win the Malibu, which would give if him a couple that, of yeah. grade ones. Code of Honor probably won more prestigious grade <clears> ones. <throat> than, yeah. But, but you know, got, got elevated by disqualification in one of them. So, you know, I think those are the three sure. finalists most yeah. likely, but I, I think Maximum That's Security true. has – done more than enough well he'd be like the hit group boston with that <laughs> debut album that was so good and then he made others but it's okay i mean will we see a four-year-old maximum security out there I, you think i'd like to, i'd like to see i mean him. i'd like I'd to like see to that i mean i still wish he'd run in one of the other triple crown races but you know that's all gone and oh. uh, you know i'd like to see him come back as a four-year-old <clears throat> gary west was talking about the saudi cup so who knows that's changing the game that's, isn't that's it that's changed the game yeah with the pegasus Dropping to, you know, say dropping to three million, it's still three million dollars. Yeah, <clears throat> but, but, I, but I it changes again, it changes the dynamic a little. You know, I'm having brain lock. Has, has who has somebody signed up maximum security for stud duty? Has, has that deal been made? So. I don't so, believe so. Yeah, I mean, Gary West tends to be a sportsman about these things. Uh, um, I I think he is planning to race him again mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? Uh, I mean, why why make wouldn't a lot you? of money. You can make a hell of a lot. Of a good money. older horse, you can make a lot of money. You can make a lot of money. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, if you look at the only new three Saudi million Cup, in the Pegasus, <laughs> but. only three million. But you're gonna bring home two of that, and uh, yeah. the Dubai is, you know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Plus, you can go around again at the end of next year, and you know, get that extra race in them. Well, I don't See, know. Well, yeah, it's hard, hard to say. Take one month at a time. Call one us one if you're listening, Jason's service. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more. Evan Hammonds, Lenny Shulman here on The Horse Racing Show. Welcome back to The Horse hey. Racing Show. Energy. Hey, hey Kenny yeah. Rice here, yeah. along with Lenny Shulman, oh. Evan Hammonds from The Blood Horse. Lenny calling it quits. Yes. It's going to be a sad day. Well, you're still writing. You're just not going to do full time. Yeah, it's not. It's not a sad day for me. But uh, yeah, the, the the when the dogs have had mm. enough of me, I'll, I'll start to get out of the house again and do some other things. It's a sad day at the Blood Horse. We're going to miss his cheery disposition every day. Aren't <laughs> <laughs> you? It's a joyous, that joyous <laughs> mood. <laughs> Comes in whistling every morning. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Just you know, and, and and really I'd like to apologize for all of horse racing for having fun in the sport of horse racing. <laughs> <laughs> Should be like no cheering in the press box, no cheering around the racetrack. You know? yeah. No laughing, yeah, no, no laughing. No, that, that, that's always a good one. No cheering at the racetrack. Like, like there's there's a media member alive that doesn't have a bet on every <laughs> single race. That's that they're, right. that they're pulling their hair out if, 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 if it's not going their way. But yeah, you're not supposed to be rooting. Them. With with things that went wrong this year, and not to belabor that point. <clears throat> In 19, but I said it is funny. They want you to gamble. They want you to drink. <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong? But, but, but. <laughs> let's not let's treat this reverence here. Yeah. So the screaming drunk guy that just lost 400 bucks at the track today. Oh, sorry. Come again. Yeah. Come back next Saturday. Come back we'll next Saturday. Again. We will offer you no free cokes, no free parking, <clears throat> and we'll do it all again. And we'll do it all again. Yeah. Customers are always right. Because the <laughs> customer's always broke at the end of the day. <laughs> Will it be the point sometime that everybody has a casino along with a racetrack? Is that, is that the way it's going to go? You know, Kentucky just elected a governor that's uh, for opening up casinos. And, you know, you go to most places. I was actually in Dayton, Ohio recently and went to a, a harness track up there has a casino. That's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a national chain Hollywood casino deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's casinos and I'm not opposed to that, by the way. 
Yeah, I have a sports oh. book in my bedroom, actually. Uh, <laughs> you know, the lights come on. You know, oh, the Yankees are minus 110. All right, let's go. It, it is crazy, though. The problem is the Yankees are always minus 110 in your house. <laughs> and if we could talk about the people that's been through that bedroom. Oh, that's a whole day. Okay, moving on to our family show continues. There is a proliferation of, of gambling, isn't there? Isn't there? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. sports wagering too is is taking hold, and whether that I mean that's not going to really enhance racing's bottom line or any state's bottom line, to tell you the truth. But I, but I think it's a good thing that people can have the opportunity to bet on the Packers or the Browns on a Sunday, yeah. you know, as know, opposed it, to calling the bookie. And Chicken. let's face it, we all live in an area there that's just rich in gambling. You know, Ed Kerr was the the guy that came up with the vig, the ten mm-hmm. percent. Back in the forties, you know, and uh, you bet a hundred, you lose it, you lose a hundred and ten. He's a Kentucky guy. I was here. Yeah. Uh, I remember when the racing form, when he died, I don't know, like 14, 15 yeah. years ago, Dave Tooley was writing for the racing form yeah. in Vegas then and called me. He thought I might have met him or knew him. I knew who he was. I never met the man. But, you know, yeah. something Kentucky can be proud of, the man that invented the VIG <laughs> along with cigarettes and bourbon <clears throat> and gambling on horse, horse racing. racing. I'm telling you, this is the Bible Belt. That's why I never left. <laughs> That's right. Hadn't the mob invented the VIG before? <laughs> Well, apparently he officially got credit for it. Okay. See, I think his was you actually had to pay with dollars. The mob's was if we've learned anything from Joe Pesci, <laughs> who was who was uh, at the Breeders' Cup at the Breeders' by Cup. By the way, yes. Yeah. Didn't want to be known, but but Evan and I both were uh, sharing a suite with him. Uh, actually, didn't know it. Yeah. Well, they did such a great job promoting it. Well, no, he no. did not want to. He didn't want to low key. No, no, he. I think but, he did that about ten years ago or so. I know he was at Keeneland and they, you know, tried to give him a little pop. Yeah, yeah he's. Uh, I think Joe's a little sick of people thinking that they know him. Uh, you think I'm funny? <laughs> you think <laughs> yeah. I'm ha ha? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, would you like <laughs> eight hundred people coming up to you day with that? Uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can understand this privacy thing there. Yeah, well, much like and, you. And what better place to get lost <laughs> than at a racetrack? That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, usually could throw a bowling ball down there and not hit anybody. <laughs> but no, the Santa, yeah. Santa Anita was uh, just going back to Breeders' Cup because. They put on a great show that week. I it was. The it was crowds great. were great. The tra- mm-hmm. I, if if you haven't been to Santa Anita, and it, it may as well, John Hendrickson was there, and this is my first trip to Santa Anita. If you mm-hmm. have not been out there, it is a gorgeous facility oh. in a gorgeous <clears throat> setting, and, and you need to go out and see it. It's it's it, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's it's just a treasure. The palm trees, the San Gabriel Mountains. It is a Hollywood setting. The, I mean, well, they the, Art really, Deco, the Art Deco, Art Deco building, Deco, too. I mean, yeah, every, yeah. The architecture. Open fine. Christmas Day in the 1934, somewhere around that 38, time. 38, like 37 or 38. But Evan yeah. pointed this out because we had been planning this Charlie Whittingham story, and we were in the clubhouse one day, and he said, come here, I want to show you something. Yeah. Behind these betting terminals, it's this humongous oil painting of Charlie Whittingham. You know, and they're all over the place. I mean, they're not, not Charlie Whittingham, but there's right. these gorgeous – paintings yeah artwork and 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 chandeliers and all that it's just an amazing facility it really is, it is. Uh, i mean you know people know keeneland they know saratoga but but santa anita i mean i, I hate to say go see it while it's still around <laughs> but i i don't want to joke <laughs> about that but uh, do go out and today's see show it. brought to you by the california <laughs> horse racing board <laughs> <laughs> when in California, if you can, <laughs> hurry, hurry. Yeah, don't, don't, dilly hey, dally. Is racing on the? Is is it on that cliff? Do you think? I mean, are we still going to be? Well, I won't be doing this show ten years from now. But I mean, will somebody be doing something ten years from now, where racing is still viable enough out there? Should be. I, I think so. I think people last year, 2019, were genuinely scared. They were genuinely looking into the abyss of this may not be around. And uh, as we talked about earlier, I really think that's gotten people off their asses and working to assure that it, that it is around. So sitting here today, it seems like we've turned a corner, uh, the short-term crisis and the longer-term issues that need to be cleared up i I, it seems like we've taken our first steps along that path now yeah there i mean there are still a ton of issues all the issues are still there but again i think there's more of a concerted effort to dig in and make it right 
I leave it up to you two guys. I think that's the future. I think you are going to be here in 10 yeah. years. Show 500. I, I, <laughs> show 500. We'll come back that's for the nice 500. Lady. That's right. I, 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 we'll come back you, for the 500th show. My social security check <laughs> is late, late again. again. <laughs> you know, prunes. We're, we're, good for you or not? We're going to be doing drag races out front here in golf carts. It's and and we're fantastic. not talking about Caitlyn Jenner. We're talking about cars. <laughs> Real drag we're located, race. <laughs> uh, we're located in an area of Kentucky where there was a drag strip, just like, uh, what, 50 feet outside yeah. the door here of the bunker, as Lenny so aptly named it when he was on his show mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah, it's historic. It's like American graffiti here, you know? it's uh, Line them up and If you look run. close enough, every about every two hours, Suzanne Summers comes by in a T-bird. <laughs> Very amazing. I thought you were going. I thought I, I thought we were going with t-shirt there for a second. I was, <laughs> Paula Mack comes by and goes. I was supposed to have the career, not Harrison Ford. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Ah, that's why I love this show. There's going to be more Star Wars than there are episodes of this show. Actually. I know it, JC. We got to quit those. We quit. I want to. I want to see. You know. I want Let It Ride too. That's all I yeah. care about. <laughs> it Bring good. It back. That's good. That's what we need. We need, we a, need. we need a good horse racing movie. A good, yeah, yeah, and have some fun with fun it. Fun with, yeah. 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 That's why Let It Ride is the greatest horse racing movie, I think. You have 20 seconds to respond. Well, it's better than Secretariat. I, I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking this the other day. I was thinking of Penny Chenery and... You know, she waited so oh. long to have this story done, and, and I don't know. It just they made a comic book uh, out of it, and I, I wish there's so many done a yeah, story. just so many yeah. inaccuracies. It just I mean, wasn't, uh, just just the reporters walking around right. with the hats with the with the press <laughs> thing coming. It's like this is in 1933. I mean, what do you what do you? Hello, doing? Mr. and Mrs. American, all the ships at sea. All right, yeah. we'll be back to wrap up this here episode right after this on the horse racing show. Welcome back in. Thank you for being with us here. Thank you for staying awake, Lenny Schulman and Evan Hammonds, and staying in here with us. What is your favorite? What's your New Year's resolution? You say you want a resolution? Well, you know, we don't want to change the world. Yes, we do. That, that, is a, that is a rough. Personally, well, I don't know if it's a resolution, but I have resolved to... Uh, to do some volunteer work with my time. So I'm going to be going to the Woodford Humane Society on a regular basis and uh, throwing some love on some of the animals over there and uh, just to be a little more giving of my time and energy now that I have a little more time to, to give. So I, I guess that's the closest thing to, God, you're going to, to make a resolution. Me, you're making me cry. Uh, I, I, there's not a wet eye in the house. But no, that's wonderful. They do a great job over there. They, they, they do. They really one of, my, do. I, one, one of my dogs is from there. Yeah. Uh, it's just been a wonderful addition to the family, and they do do a great job. It's uh, not an exactly a no-kill shelter, but if right. an animal doesn't have a terrible problem, it is a no-kill shelter. Yeah. And... Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to giving back, Evan. I'm going to be much more shallow and and just and just wager more. I, you know, I think the last couple of years I've kind man. of scaled back from. Uh, for, I mean, I'm still obviously you're interested, you're following everything that's going along, but uh, uh, I, I'm not a huge better, but I'm I'm just going to bet more. Good for He's you. A very good yeah. handicap. I know he is. He's a very good handicap. On occasion, on occasion. Wow. Yeah. I, you, you comes two, and goes. The, the two of the greats here. I love to read their stories. And, and again, by Justify, give it as a late Christmas or Hanukkah <laughs> gift. There's still time. It's a fantastic Martin Luther King Day gift, a Valentine's, a Valentine's gift. Valentine's gift. Groundhog's Day gift. Groundhog's Day. Day. Groundhog's Groundhog's Day. Day. Give Dynamite. it over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny, thank you. Evan, thank you. Thank you all for tuning in as we start the year 2020 here on the Horse Racing Show. It has been a fun year, a surprising year. I got to be—I didn't know we were going to be around this long, but we're still going, and the network keeps growing, and that's thanks to you and your support. And uh, next week we'll be on with—we're uh, going to talk about people that pay money to get involved in the sponsorship of horse racing now, more probably than in recent years. So that's something to look forward to. Less and so. by that time, I'll come up with a resolution as well, which is to try to make you laugh a little bit and inform each week. I'm Kenny Rice. Thanks for tuning in. You have been listening to The Horse Racing Show.